Hey everyone, this is Rob Keynes with goldsilverpros.com and today I wanted to do the second part of the fundamental series and I wanted to draw some correlations with different things to see what may affect the gold price or more importantly, how are traders looking at the market and what do they feel uh, is determined in the gold price and how do they make their bets in the futures market. So I wanted to show with you some uh, charts that I'd put out uh, about a year or so ago regarding uh, costs of the mining companies. One of the things we wanted to look at was, does gold ever fall below uh, the cost to mine it from the major companies like Barrick Newmont and uh, the average uh, all-in sustaining cost of companies as reported by the World Gold Council. Now the all-in sustaining cost basically means what are all the cash costs plus the administrative costs of running the company that go into each ounce of pulling gold out of the ground and does, does the actual spot price that we look at every day ever fall below that? Do we have a, a situation where uh, gold companies can't sell their gold for a profit? And so we looked at the average gold price and the average AISC for Barrick Newmont here. And you can see that there's correlation between just the overall average gold price, the average gold price of Barrick Newmont and what the AIS, the AISC of the World Gold Council, the World Gold Council was looking at gold production in general, including all the juniors and everything. So it's a, it's a wider, uh, basically look at costs. And so the cheapest one was actually the World Gold Council. Uh, Barrick Newmont was pretty close to the average gold price overall. So what that basically means is there's some juniors and smaller companies out there able to get it a little bit cheaper than some of the majors. And that's because the majors have to mine on such a big scale that they're taking all the gold that they can get in where some of the smaller companies can kind of pick and choose a, some of their higher grade deposits. So they, their all in sustaining costs may actually be lower. But there is a correlation between um, the average gold price and uh, Barrick Newmont's very close. You can see the blue line, Barrick Newmont, their average actual cost of digging gold out of the ground here. And then the average gold price itself, the yellow line, you can see as the cost of uh, Barrick Newmont pulls it out of the ground, the gold price goes right along with it. And sometimes it trades to a pretty healthy premium. You can see here uh, a few years ago, it was trading to a pretty healthy premium. That was back in like the 2011 timeframe when we had the really, you know, the $1,900 $1 high. Now this data is a year or so old, so it doesn't reflect the current data, the current bull market, but it's enough data for us to look at since basically 2000 to know that there is a correlation between the cost of getting the gold out of the ground for the largest producers and what the market will actually price it as. And there will be a little bit of a difference in price. The difference between the blue and the yellow lines is, is the premium that the gold companies will get uh, for pulling it out of the ground and selling their gold. Another thing that I did was I wanted to see if there's a correlation between ETF demand, specifically the GLD, but other ETFs as well, and the gold price. And this is the strongest correlation I found. You can see as people put money into to the ETFs, and that's represented by uh, the blue bars here, that's amount of tons going into the ETFs. As amount of tons increases, meaning people are buying more shares of the ETF, so they have to import more tons into the ETF to support that. Uh, that it's a very highly correlated to the gold price. You can see here as more tons are included uh, in the GLD, uh, higher gold price. So it, and it's almost a, a one for one correlation over about 15, 16 years. So if you wanna know how the gold price is determined, it is actually on the futures market. But I think what's happening is the demand for the ETFs is the number that people are looking at for placing their bets on the gold price. So if you're going to the futures market and you're placing a paper bet, you're going to go over to the GLD and say, okay, what is, what are the inflows to the GLD? Uh, what is the price, you know, the, the index of the GLD? Is it going up or down? And then, okay, I'm going to go long on a future, short on a future. And that really does affect the price. So if you really, you know, over the longer period of time, want to know where the gold price is going, you just basically look at the inflows into GLD and some of the other ETF funds. And that will tell you whether the price is going to go up or down. And I think these prices are what people use to make their bets on the futures market as well. So very, very strong correlation here and a pretty good strong correlation here between the actual all in sustaining cost of getting the gold out of the ground. So a couple of big factors there. So if you want to look at if the, the cost of getting the gold out of the ground is rising, uh, then you should expect the gold price to rise. Now we do expect because a lot of the easy gold in the world has been found that we're starting to get lower uh, average gold grades. Uh, this is uh, stuff I've done research and written articles on in the past. 
So we're definitely not having the goal grades we had 20, 30, 40, 50 years ago, except for maybe here or there, but overall average across the world. So we expect the gold price to rise just because the cost of getting it out of the ground is rising because it's becoming more scarce. But there seems to be this pretty consistent premium, except for when gold is a bull market and you have this really high premium, uh, pretty consistent uh, premium that you can expect from uh, between the cost of getting it out of the ground and what you're gonna see in the actual quoted price every day. And it's really accurately represented by the amount of money flowing into the ETF, specifically the GLD, but some of the others as well. That's basically a predictor. So if you just look at the flows of the ETF, that will tell you almost exactly what's gonna happen uh, to the gold price. I also wanted to compare physical demand. Now physical demand is from the World Gold Council. So they're considering all levels of physical demand across the world and compare that to the gold price. And there is a correlation between 2010, 2017, when I pulled this data, when it was available, uh, as the gold, uh, as the physical demand rises, the gold price tended to rise, except for about 2012 to 2013, we have a little bit of a disconnect. Uh, the actual gold price fell faster than the physical demand. So there's not a one for one there for the physical demand. And that's true if you look at the uh, futures markets. When you go to the futures markets, you look at physical deliveries. Physical deliveries do boost uh, the gold price you, and, and the silver price as well. You can clearly see this in the data, but it's not a one for one. Why is it? Because there's a lot of derivative trading on top of that you have a small percentage of that is the actual physical trading. And then you have a higher percentage of that is a derivative trading, the paper trading. And I think we've seen that on the COMEX, a lot of paper trades come in, especially if they're short, you're not gonna have that gold price rise as fast, even though you may be having some physical demand there. Uh, but when the physical demand comes in strong, like we've seen over the last few months in gold and silver, it has an outsized effect on what happens to that gold and silver price as well. So physical demand can be the ultimate leverage to get that gold and silver price up. But if you really want to know what it's going to be, just look at the, the ETF demand, the GLD, that'll tell you where the gold price is going. And remember, it's not likely if ever to fall below the average uh, cost to get it out of the ground. So this is really the three factors you want to look at. What is the average cost every year to get it out of the ground? Is it rising? It generally, it will tend to be, unless you know we just have a really good year. Uh, also look at the inflows into the GLD, that will tell you what's happening with the gold price. And look at physical demand. Physical demand does have an effect uh, it really has an effect though when it's very heavy on the futures market. When it comes in heavy on the futures market, you'll see that demand. But again, that futures market is more month to month and the studies we're looking at is year to year. So year to year, that fiscal demand has an effect, but we're mostly talking about derivative driven market. And I've said this time and time again, the price is determined by the COMEX because it's on the Globex, it trades all the time and it's got so much data available. People use the COMEX to deliver uh, to determine the gold price. Not as much LBMI or the Shanghai, and I'll get into that further this week in the Tuesday and Thursday video, why LBMA and Shanghai don't drive the gold price, the COMEX does. But the derivatives really are higher, more closely correlated than the physical demand. And that's because there's so much more paper than there is the physical trade. The physical trade only makes a difference when people really come in in a given month and really uh, stand for delivery. And then it does have an effect that does get people's attention. So just some factors for you to use in your longer term planning for figuring out where the gold price is going to go. This is one of the reasons I don't expect the gold price to just crash is because cost to get out of the ground is going up. And, and very rarely does the cost uh, in the, the spot market ever drop below the average cost to get out of the ground. It happens time to time, but it tends to be very, very short lived. And that's because there's so much demand on gold right now from the central banks and other big players in the market. They're not going to let it fall below the average cost to mine. If the demand were really to fall, then yeah, it could fall below the average cost of mine. And then we would have supply destruction in the mines. They would stop making so much and then that would uh, make it more scarce. And then of course you would see upper price movement in uh, gold once it's more scarce. But there's so much demand right now, I don't expect that to happen. It's continually pulling the price up and it is highly correlated to the average all in sustained cost of getting it out of the ground. Those are just some three interesting facts for you. The fundamentals of the gold trade. If you wanted to fundamentally know how gold price is determined, this is basically it. The data is very clear and it's held true for about the last 20 years or so. It is a paper dr uh, driven market. So as long as that COMEX market is operating uh, and it has enough physical gold and silver to deliver and it's considered you know, a, a reputable exchange, that's really gonna determine the gold price. And it's gonna be reflected in the GLD as well. Uh, the GLD and the COMEX are really side by side in determining the gold price. COMEX actually determines it, but I think they make their bets on the GLD and vice versa. I think those are the two factors that people look at when they're making their bets. So that's really how the gold price is determined. It's super simple. 
Um, there is some correlation to energy prices, but not as much since energy prices have fallen. That relationship has really fallen away over the last 10 years, especially. Uh, it's, it's not energy prices. Energy prices don't, aren't the biggest determinant of, of the cost of getting uh, gold out of the ground anymore. I mean, it's part of the factor, uh, but generally people have pretty cheap energy and that's largely determined by natural gas, um, natural green energies, nuclear and coal are the, the, the main grid energies around the world. And those have so far have been plenty, plenty available. And while the oil prices moved up and down quite a bit, that really only affects the transportation side of the equation, like getting it in trucks from the mine to a refinery or to the market if, if they're refining there at their uh, mining location. So that, so that relationship between oil and energy costs and uh, the price of gold out of the ground has really fallen away. It's not as strong as it used to be. Now that grid power seems to be you know, fairly ubiquitous everywhere. It more has to do with just all of the costs of getting all the administrative costs, all the costs of separating the gold uh, from the rock and, and mining it and all that kind of stuff goes into it. There is a stronger correlation there. So that it, just a real simple lesson here. This video is not gonna be a long one, but if you wanna know what's gonna determine the gold price, these are three factors that you look at. It's very easy, you know, if you follow these three factors to more on a medium to long-term uh, basis, know where that's going. And then of course, these factors are affecting the COMEX and how people make their bets long or short on the price. And the traders are very, very smart. They'll use these data points to make their bets. And that's why uh, the COMEX being the short-term market, the day-to-day, -day, month to month, or literally minute to minute as contracts are put in, determines the actual real price right now. But longer term, it's affected by the cost to get it out of the ground, the amount of uh, demand for the derivatives, and a little bit in the physical, but that physical tends to be very short lived effect on the price. The only way to get a true market in gold and silver prices, true physical based market price would be to get rid of the derivatives. You have to get rid of the GLD, you have to get rid of the ridiculous amount of futures trading that goes on on the COMEX. And then you would get a real price for the physical trade itself, but that's not gonna happen as long as these derivatives exist. So that's basically it. That's the lesson for today. Pretty quick and easy one, but again, very high correlations there. You can basically count on them. They had been in place for so long that uh, no reason really to worry about a lot of other different things. A lot of people surmise that this or that affects the gold price. It's really just those three things uh, that I showed you for the most part. And it's very simple. So very uh, easy to determine where the gold price is going to go if you follow those trends on a medium to long term basis. So that's going to be it for today, guys. Appreciate it. Uh, until next time, this is Robert with goldsilverpros.com.